This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. We're here in Irvine, California, live with SiliconAngle.com, ServicesAngle.com's continuous coverage of the HP Services Transformation, the Services Reality um, Initiative. And we're here with Tracy Galloway, who's the Vice President of, uh, of, of Channel Support. Uh, and we're here with, with Puzant Osbug, who is with Pricon, a channel partner of HP's. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks Thank for coming you. inside the Cube. Uh, Tracy, we've talked a lot today about the, the, the services angle, mm -hmm. um, and we've touched a little bit on the channel piece. Now, when we were at the HP Voyager launch, yeah. uh, we heard about services one, Perfect. service one, I guess it's mm -hmm. called. Um, Want to dig into the channel uh, programs a little bit. Talk about uh, what your role is, and then let's get into the program. Absolutely. So I'm responsible for the uh, channels organization across both North America and South America, and I have the wonderful opportunity to uh, work with partners like uh, Puzant and Pricon. And uh, primarily what we're trying to do every day of our job is to make sure that we are providing enough portfolio options, enough service options, and a very robust opportunity to work with HP both on a uh, sales and a sales and delivery opportunity. And we'll talk more about that, but those are really kind of you know how, how we engage on a daily basis. Basis. Uh, Service One, I just want to chat real quick about that one because that's, that's something I want to tee up with you. Service One is our premier program in our technology services organization. And it really is the framework and the overarching program for how we engage with our partners and work with them. And it launched in uh, November of last year, and so it's just been around for four short months, but we're already seeing lots of traction and partners are really getting engaged with the Service One program. Okay, so if I understand that program, there's a lot of options that you mm -hmm. as a channel partner have. You can do HP's brand, you can do your own brand, some kind of hybrid uh, approach. So you're a service one, you, you take yes. that program <laughs> to the market. Right. How, do you, how do you approach, what does it mean to you and how do you go to market with it? You know, I think it's a very mutually beneficial program uh, and I think it increases the value and the level of service we can mutually, collectively deliver to our customers together. Uh, I see a great commitment from HP from top to bottom to the channel and to this program and to enable their partners in selling and delivering um, HP skewed part numbers. Uh, service One opens up uh, pretty much all services for delivery by their partners and of course there are specific training requirements and if you achieve those then it extends the partner's reach and the breadth of product and the services that they can offer their users, their, their end users. Um, this allows HP and the partner to present a unified strategy and allows us, participate in the, us as a partner to participate in the delivery of services. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the beauty of the program is that we as a partner can choose to deliver mm -hmm. with an HP branded name right. uh, or we can deliver our own brand with HP support and the customer feels ultimately better and ensured that HP is behind the product yet they enjoy the familiar faces and their trusted advisor on their site. So when when you approach so first of all how, how do you approach it you you have your brand and HP we support are right now support. No, we are doing HP branded. Okay, yes. so so um, and so your customers that they, they they know you as the, the 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 channel partner, but then you introduce HP to them. You say, okay, we now have HP services, and they, they like that. Obviously, HP's big company. How does that all work? In the past, uh, we've been servicing our customers by selling HP services to them and HP's. Uh, personnel would come and implement and we would sell the hardware. Okay. Now we'll, we're able to tell our customer you're gonna buy this HP part number but we are going to the installation and the, the technician and our uh, staff that is intimately familiar with your environment will be on your site and you, we are your lead contact. Okay. However, we are supported by HP on the back end. So it's a win-win situation for the customer. So, Tracy, we had uh, Chris Riley on um, at the Project Voyager. You know Chris, he's the head of uh, North American Salesforce, the storage division, and he was talking about the 100% the, um, channel program mm -hmm. um, and for a variety of products. He talked about Service One. Um, 
there seems to be a real land grab going on for the channel. It's, very, it's quite interesting. You've got this oligopoly that's emerged with about four or five big players in the IT industry. You're the biggest. Um, and everybody's really going after the channel. That must make you feel good. Uh, because Yes, we are, we are aligned with the best partner, I think. Right, a lot, well, a lot of big companies you know, falling all over the channel. What's going on there in the channel? How is the channel transforming? And why is there this you know, fervor to get you know, the channel... You know, loyalty in the channel really is sort of a misnomer, but mm -hmm. but what's, what's going on there? You know, uh, 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 scope that out for us. Sure, absolutely. So I think first and foremost, it comes from top organization inside of HP down. Right, Meg Whitman has brought in a brand new. Uh, meaning for what partners are to HP and we're supporting it and I think HP probably has gone back and forth in the in the few years on where we stand with partners right now we are 100% behind our partners and I know that that's going to continue so that's kind of the first thing a tops down leadership strategy around the commitment and dedication to partners the second thing is that we view our partners as truly an extension of our sales force. So it isn't HP against partners, it isn't HP and, and partners against direct. It really is now and a true extension of our sales force. So we've done very unique things, especially in the services organization as well, where we're compensating both our direct sellers when they walk in with the partner. So we're trying to take any kind of competition out. We've also introduced what we call rules of engagement, so we really try to be able to define and work together better. But it is about HP touching more customers, working better together, and being able to grab a bigger share of the overall market. So what do you tell that channel partner that, that has seen many companies, not just HP, you know, ebb and flow? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And there's skeptics out there saying, oh boy, okay, this sounds really good, and they're going to get me all excited. And right. you know, what do you tell those guys? They're out there, and they're in their audience. Right, right. right. Absolutely. And so I think it really comes down to, um, you know, I, you have to believe, right? You have to go back and you have to stop and say, okay, what are we doing to back up those statements? We're not just giving lip service right now. So Service One is a very perfect example of that. It is a program that enables partners, as, as Pazant was saying, to, to both sell and deliver. We're doing things in this program we've never done before. We're opening up HP's intellectual property to our partners. So when we're doing that, we're getting into a very trusting, open relationship with them. And we're allowing them to take our IP and then be able to deliver on that for us. So that's another thing. Uh, we're also setting very, uh, you know, working with them to set aggressive service targets and goals. And we're paying out some of the highest rebates uh, across all, comp all of our competitors in the industry. So I think that they can see not only are we committed to you know, the right words. We're backing it up with the programs, the dollars, the investments, as well as, again, sharing the intellectual property. Yeah, so I used the term land grab before. You're doing more than an MDF land grab, for example. You're talking right. about integrating processes, sharing IP, mm -hmm. doing training. Um, okay, Puzan, I wanted to ask you about the cloud. I'm going to shift gears here a little bit, because the cloud, everybody's talking about cloud, the vendors are talking about cloud, the customers, some of them are talking about cloud, some of them mm -hmm. talk about IT as a service, but certainly guys like us, at Wikibon and SiliconANGLE talking about cloud. What's your perspective as a, as a channel partner? You sell a lot of hardware and software and, and services. Um, the cloud is, is great because it's easy and simple and pay as you go and, and, and consumerized, all that stuff. But at the same time, oftentimes it's going to be delivered through a new channel. So what do you do as a, as a, as a channel participant who's been in business for a number of years, you're the president of the company, how do you look at the cloud and how do you capitalize on it? Is the cloud to you a threat or an opportunity or both? That's exactly, a, a, you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say we were trying to decide if it's a, it's a great opportunity. For sure it's a great opportunity. But uh, you need to align yourself. A partner needs to align themselves, retrain themselves and change the way they operate in order to be able to participate in the cloud infrastructure and the coming, so there are several different ways the cloud, and from, from what we understand talking to our customers and our vendors, this is going to be at least a 10 year process. It's not going to be overnight. Our customers, they don't feel ready to jump onto the cloud. They are entertaining the idea first, a private cloud, which we can be a great part of building for them. And then the, the next stage would be a, a private and public hybrid cloud and uh, it's going to take about at least 10 years for people, if ever, to jump onto the cloud. So um, for us, and for me, it's a great opportunity. We just need to retrain and change the way we sell to the customer. I was 
wonder if you could chime in, yeah. Absolutely, and I think, you know, everything Prusant has said is, 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 is absolutely the directional where, where customers are going, but what they're interested in today is how do I make sure that I'm ready for where I want to go tomorrow? So when we look at HP and obviously with our partners, we're starting to say to customers, let's look at implementing a converged infrastructure today so that you have the capability, the growth, and the opportunity to move that forward and, and to scale up that path if you so choose to move to the cloud or you're moving in small steps to a virtualized environment and then moving up to uh, looking at an orchestration type of model where you're doing some things with more modularity. So I think everything that HP is doing is putting customers in at least the right path directionally to move to the cloud when they're so ready to do so. And, and uh, if I may, yeah, please. Um, HP already has an opportunity for the partner. Uh, they have a product called uh, Cloud Workshop and they have already opened that up for partner delivery. So if you go through the necessary training, that's an additional opportunity for the partner to present uh, the uh, workshop to their customers. So this is an, I mean, it's an interesting topic. Uh, in some respects, your customers are in competition with Amazon. <laughs> the IT shop is saying, all right, well, I, I can't just let my whole application portfolio go to Amazon. That's not going to work. I have CIO, I have to protect my organization's data. But at the same time, there's this tension. So. Uh, you're talking about uh, uh, converged infrastructure, for example, Tracy, as being more cloud-like. So that essentially is putting in IT infrastructure that allows IT organizations to be more responsive, to be more, more agile. Do those worlds come together, in your view, or do they stay largely separate? You said it's, ten, it's a 10-year journey, uh, but do they even have to come together? Maybe there is some kind of healthy coexistence. What, what do you think? They don't. They don't have to come together. What, what we're seeing is that the CIO of the company is becoming, and a services broker. He he's going to be put in a position, what to put on the cloud, and what not what to keep in house in their private cloud. So, eventually, uh, every larger corporation will will put some of their applications onto the cloud but their most sensitive data is going to be remaining within the private cloud. So what's hot right now? I mean, you know, the, 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 the channel ebbs and flows with the hot trends, right? You guys, you're there, customers say they, they have needs, you fill them. What's hot right now? I mean, obviously virtualization, you know, cloud generically, but what are you guys seeing out there? I think services are hot right now. Customers, they don't want break fix anymore. They want preventive maintenance. They do not want things to break mm -hmm. because as you know, as time goes on, the um, everything is becoming critical. Nothing can go down. It could cost a, a larger company $10 million an hour uh, for downtime. So they want everything done um, beforehand, uh, preventatively, to avoid any downtime. And, and Gen8, HP's Gen8 uh, infrastructure and the new services that they offer are going to minimize the unforeseen downtime. And I think that's where the opportunity is. The other thing we're seeing in the uh, in the trends is a lot more of customers are looking for engagements up front, some level of consultative engagement. Is my environment ready? What kind of assessments do I need to be looking at that are short term that give me a, a confidence level that when I go in and put in my infrastructure, I've got the right thing. So we're actually seeing kind of sales work in three steps right now too. You know, a consulting piece up front, moving into some level of architectural, and then just as Puzant says, make sure that it doesn't go down. So watch it, maintain it, just like we're talking about with our new HP services portfolio. Well, but I, uh, data migration, data story, I mean, all of that is just huge right now. I mean, you're talking about some consulting services. Yes. I would think in the context of cloud, mm -hmm. that, that security services up front, mm -hmm. planning, how to even prepare for mm -hmm. the cloud mm -hmm. would be, uh, top of mind mm -hmm. on a lot of a lot of CIOs. Is that something that you've evolved to, Pizant? Is that a capability that you see coming in, in the future? Um, I, I think it's premature, not yet. Yeah. But eventually, we definitely see ourselves in, in consulting to our customers for cloud infrastructure and what path to take with HP's help. HP has announced some great products today and uh, throughout the last couple of months uh, to help customers ease into the cloud world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, my last question, Tracy. So when you talk to your channel um, constituents, mm -hmm. what are the top, let's say three, two, whatever, five if you want, what are the top things on their minds? What do they want from you? 
They are always looking for HP to be a leader, to come out with something new that gives them an edge or an angle with their customer base. So that's kind of number one. What are you doing? What trends are you seeing? And what can you help us with as a partner to really get ahead of our competition? So that's kind of number one. The second thing they're looking for is uh, overall analysis and data and information. So we're always sharing things back with our partner community of what we're seeing from an organization and where we're investing in R&D. So it's really, you know, two or three things are always forward looking. Where do we need to be going and how do they need to be you know, moving their organization. Something that we've seen and Pizant touched on it was we're seeing a very big transformation of our channel partners from again a very box led, I'm just going to sell a box and then you know that's it. That's not where the industry is going as you well know, right? It is all going into a services led solution wrap. So it's hardware, software, services all wrapped together. And so they're really looking for HP to be a leader and help them get into those, uh, into those markets. And then the last thing I would say is they're also looking for HP to be a partner, to be there when there's an issue or a problem. And those kind of things we've, uh, I think, have really gone to the mat with our partners with and we've said, we are here for you. So it's the backup. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hear that. And, um, and I appreciate it because y y the things that you're talking about are not box mentality. They're mm -hmm. business process integration, they're true partnerships, they're long lasting. Back to my earlier question about what about the skeptics? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you, I think you are putting your money where your mouth is and, and that, that really is a, a, an investment. You know, much more so, as I say, than throwing MDF. MDF is still good. But, you know, you, you, you can't play that game. Right. You know, that's a zero-sum game, really. Right. And, you know, we're actually investing in a different way right now. We're actually putting uh, service champions on site with our, with our partners to be able to help teach and modify the sales process. So we're looking at how can we invest in, in bodies to help you change the way your organization sells and put services up front and be able to, you know, bring with it all the products and solutions and software we so, need to so have. So what, again, does a service champion do? A service champion goes into a partner organization and, and basically lives and works with them side by side. And we have, you know, obviously we put a partner or a service champion on site and we would look for partner growth as a result. But those are kind of investments we're doing differently right now is how can we work with you and with your sales teams to invest and in long-term growth so that our partners can be healthy and obviously HP can grow our services business as well. Yeah, if I may add, um, as far as HP's commitment to the channel, um, we became a preferred service provider or a sell and deliver partner about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have seen our PRI score, which is the way HP measures your services sales to your hardware sales. We have increased our, every year we have increased our levels and we have tripled our PRI scores. And we have seen, and, and I'm not saying, it's not from just words that I heard from the executives, we have physically seen the level of in commitment to us from HP increase as we increase our own commitment to HP and services. So, so it's reciprocal. It so is. PRI score, I'm not familiar with that metric. What, what is that all about? Basically it measures the amount of services you're selling in relationship to the amount of hardware you're selling. Okay. So we at HP in the, in the services division, we obviously want to make sure there is a service level and we call it attached to a piece of hardware. And so that you are getting the full robust experience of an HP product. And we go back into partners, and if they have a low PRI score or they're not selling enough services in relationship to the amount of hardware, we sit down and work with them. And our goal is to raise that number up so that they are able to experience, again, a more robust offering and be able to service their clients better. What does that mean for you, Fuzan? I mean, obviously, um, it, it maybe gives you more profits from s services, but it also strikes me that it balances out your portfolio, your offering a little bit more and reduces your risk. We'll talk about that a little bit. First of all, when we when we joined that program, our PRI level was around 0.6, and, and they, uh, they wanted it to be 1.2 for you to be an elite member. And today that elite member has trans transitioned the elite world to an expert. So, um, Sorry, so, so point six says for every dollar of product you're selling 60 cents? They have a different or? way of measuring it. It's not it. that simple. It's okay, not that so. simple. It's, it's very complicated. Yeah. But the, the, and at the end of the day, you need to increase that number. Yeah, okay. So HP came to us. And we have a great team. And they, they came to us and they showed us. And they helped us increase that number. And we, we in continually increased that number. And we've seen the difference in our bottom line and our top line. We have never sold so much services before, simply for the asking. And another new offering that they came out with about six months ago is uh, proactive services. They came and explained to us and the benefits to our customer, and we started selling that and we see the difference 
uh, and we enjoy the benefits of that. Services is a profitable business. We've been saying that for a while, and but yet it's transforming, and those who don't uh, hop on the transformation curve are going to get left in the dust. Uh, Tracy Puzant, thanks very much for coming inside the Cube, sharing with us your services and channel perspectives. Good luck with the program, and uh, good luck with the business. Thank you, Matt, for Thank having you very me. Much.